Hey there, everyone. Welcome to the the Survivalist Prepper live stream. I, I need to figure out what I'm going to call this little little shindig. Uh, but anyway, welcome to the the show, the the video. Uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight is some of the different bags that I have, and and some of the different bags that you might want to have as well. Uh, I did a video a couple weeks ago that went through some of the stuff that was in my old bag, a lot of the stuff that was in my old bag. And I went through what was going to make the cut, what wasn't. And I'm still kind of on the fence with a few of different things of those. But I figured since I have all of my bags empty right now, or a few of them anyway, that I would go through uh, each one of them and, and go through the pros and cons, the you know how the bags are made and all that. Uh, should be a, a pretty fun video. Uh, with that too, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up, if you guys have any comments or, or thoughts on any of this stuff, uh, what I'm going to do, if I can pull up the comments here, uh, is, or if you have, if you want me to look up your bag, something like that, um, I can look that up uh, during the show. Uh, maybe towards the middle or the end, we can kind of put some of that stuff in there. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, but I do want to do that. So if you do have, a, my, my whole point is, if you do have uh, a bag or something you want me to look up to show everyone else, uh, what you use and why you use it and all that, we can do that. Uh, but uh, I, I was going to say something else and I can't remember it. So what we'll do is we'll just go to uh, this bag that I've got right here. Uh, and this is the this is the 511 uh, Amp 72 bag. And this is the new one I've got. Now I've got a couple more. I've got a couple more that I'm going to show you. the uh, My Yukon Outfitters bag. And I also have this Maxpedition. This is like an EDC bag. Uh, and I want to go through uh, the different kinds and what they might be useful for. Uh, and then, you know, a couple of little other kind of smaller ones. So, uh, again, if you have any questions, just let me know. So, the reason that, that I went to this bag right here, this uh, Amp 72, is because... Here, let me move this out of the way here. Uh, is because... A couple of things, actually. The, the quality of this bag uh, is better than the Yukon Outfitters bag uh, that I had. Uh, the, the one thing that really kind of sold me on this bag, and I don't know if it's just because, uh, you know, because I'm a prepper and I think it's kind of cool, but this bag actually opens up, uh, other than this part right here, it opens up to where you can fully open this. And this is for a short barrel rifle, or with me, my uh, AR pistol without the stock, uh, because the, without the pistol brace, sorry, not the stock, uh, without the pistol brace uh, will fit in here perfectly. So I don't know that in a some sort of bug out situation, or even every day, uh, because of laws and all of that, that I'm going to actually carry that in here. But this is a pouch uh, that you could use for a few other things as well if it isn't for that. But in some sort of emergency situation, uh, it's it's good to know that there's a, a spot that I could actually carry that. Now, there's a, a, a spot inside this for uh, concealed carry as well, but that gives me a, a, a rifle option. So... Uh, the other thing too, with if you just had the regular AR, you could get probably get another one of these straps, uh, strap one side down, uh, break it, break it down, the upper and the lower, and strap one side to each side. So that's kind of cool. It's got this pocket down here, this pocket up here. I just don't. I mean, it, it's this pocket goes all the way down to the bottom. So whatever you put in there, <laughs> uh, good luck getting it. I think towards the towards the bottom of this pocket, but it's decent to have. Uh, the other reason I went for this bag uh, is this backing right here is really rigid compared compared to my Maxpedition. Now this is padded and it's it's nice and all, but it's really not. It's not as rigid as that, and it's not going to be, it's not as uh, uh, form-fitting, I suppose is the word. And again, like uh, or like I said in the beginning, um, I did a video of the things that may or may not go. This video is kind of going over the different bags while they're empty. And then in the future, the next video probably is going to be actually what I put in this bag. And then I'll be testing it out, so I'll get a better idea uh, 
you know how comfortable this actually is. I'm pretty sure it is. Five Eleven makes really good bags, but uh, another reason that I wanted to get this is it's it's low profile. And let me show you on the website here. Uh, Mister Reading River, the River said, uh, uh, "So if I'm not going to carry an AR until after the ship, <laughs> why get a bag that will hide one?" Uh, that's true, but I don't want to take this bag out. Uh, and you know, get uh, get stopped by the police or something like that. So uh, it, now, granted, if it's uh, broken down and the magazine's somewhere separate, I need to look into the laws here. That's a possibility as well. That way, it wouldn't be uh, necessarily a concealed carry. It would be trans uh, transporting or something like that. I would have to figure it out. I just want to make sure I'm legal. That's my my whole point with all this. Um. So anyway, this uh, this is some of the 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 bullet points of this Amp seventy two bag right here. Uh, it's got uh, the front panel, which is this hex grid, which is really cool, and I'll be going over uh, what this does. It 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 works basically just like a Molly system, uh, but it's just this hex grid. So I'll just show you right now. Let me pull this uh, pull this picture over right here, like with my trauma kit. You can just hook this up in here through these little hexes, and you can go whatever direction you want to have this bag sitting on there. So you could have it sideways, uh, anything like that. Uh, and then I will show you the other part of that here in just a second, but I want to go through this stuff first so I don't jump all around. Um, like I said, it's got the hex grid. It's got a low-profile low front pocket. It's got a pocket up here, which is padded uh, up towards the top for... Uh, it's, it's got a felt... Not padded. It's got a felt interior. Uh, load lifters. It, it, you can put a hydration, a hydration pack in here. I'll go through that in a second. Uh, it's 500D nylon. Uh, and on the bottom, it's 1,050 nylon. Uh, 1,050 denier. That Yukon Outfitters bag is actually polyester, and there's a couple differences uh, between those two, and I'll go through that too, but one of the main things I like about this as well, and a lot of different bags have them, but it's the YKK zippers. Uh, YKK zippers are, uh, I, I try to get them on every bag that I have. I don't know that they're on that Yukon Outfitter, because when it comes to a bag, oops, wrong picture. <laughs> when it comes to your bag, the things that are going to fail are like the seams and the zippers themselves. Uh, you know, the zipper falls off and it makes the bag just, you know, almost worthless. Um, so that's the two most important things. Uh, these YKK zippers, uh, they say that they get smoother with time. They're self-lubricating. Uh, they're just really good, really strong zippers. Uh, and over time, they just kind of get better. So I think... When you're thinking about a bag like this, that's one of the main things. Is is the bag itself going to fall apart? Uh, so with that, let me go through some of the stuff on front. Like I said, this hex panel, while I've got this here, this hex panel, this grid comes off. So you can rip this off. Uh, and it's got a pocket under here, a little kind of a secret hidden pocket, I suppose. Uh, and you can slap something on, like with this. I've got this little pouch right here, uh, and it's got two side side pouches that you can put stuff in. So this would sit on the outside. I could put some trauma stuff on here. Uh, I could put whatever I wanted, that quick access type stuff. Now with these, with this pouch, um, you would attach it kind of the. You can either attach it with these uh, these hooks right here. And then kind of like these ones on the bottom right here. Or you can pull off this backing. Make sure I'm still in the shot doing this. You can pull off this backing and it's Velcro. And it'll stick right on there and you can take it off. Uh, also, this little pouch, it's, I think it's called a dual deploy. There's two different pouches. So you could take off one at a time. So that is an option for inside this bag. Let me take this off real quick. Uh, if I can, you could actually take this little hex grid also and put it inside the bag. Uh, that way you could attach something up to the top of your bag. So if you had your trauma kit or something right at the top of your bag, you could hook it up here 
and all you'd have to do is open this little part right here and you'd be able to get to your trauma kit. So that's kind of cool. Uh, inside, it's got a couple of pouches. Oh, like this one, this pocket I said, this one is felt line. So if you have a cell phone, if you have something that, you know, sunglasses, although I don't know that I'd want to put sunglasses on the outside of this uh, because if this hit the ground, you'd probably break your glasses. Uh, but on the inside, it's got a couple other pouches, uh, typical for a lot of bags. This one's kind of a secret pouch, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, in here, you could put some important stuff, and it's not, uh, you know, super noticeable that the, po the pocket is actually there. Uh, another thing I like with these is these side pouches or the side opening pouch, uh, and it opens from both sides. So you could open this side of the bag and, and reach into this side or that side. You don't have to open the whole thing. Uh, but it's got a lot of, see if I can get this on the camera, uh, a lot of little spots for to put certain different things. So a lighter, a ferro rod, a, you know, a compass, a pens and paper, stuff like that. Um, then also it's got two side pockets for water bottles. And the water bottles actually share a an outside pocket that you can access it as well. But this is all part of the same thing. So if you have a water bottle in here, you're not going to be able to put a lot on this side of the pocket. So, uh, But still pretty cool. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this because I've got a couple other ones as well. Uh, and then also on the back, you have a spot for a hydration bladder or whatever, uh, maybe a laptop or something that you could put, you wanted to put back here. If you did put a hydration bladder back here, I've got to see if I can line this up so you can see it. Up here, um, you do have, there is a hole that you can actually, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this where you can see it. There is a hole where you can put that hose through uh, the hydration bladder, though, right through there on, on both sides. So you can do whatever side. And then you just run it down your strap. I do like this because it's not, uh, oh, and it's got also got pockets, a little pockets down here on the waist straps uh, that, you know, you put a little sewing kit or, or, you know, whatever you wanted to put down in there. It's got the compression strap. So really cool bag. Uh, what I do like about this is it's not super, let me get this. It's not super tactical uh, and it's, it's pretty low key. So when you look at uh, the website here, some of these other pictures, it's pretty low key. It, it doesn't, it looks like you would, you know, if you're walking around downtown, you're not going to raise a lot of suspicion. If you're walking wherever, you're not going to raise a lot of suspicion uh, like, you know, my other bag did. Uh, let me read the comments here, see if I'm missing anything. Uh, I, I, yeah, this is going to be, it's going to be tough reading the comments and trying to do all this stuff all at once. So what I'll have to do is have to, a Q and a session towards the, kind of the end of this stuff. Uh, but at any rate, that's this bag right here. So what I want to do is talk about why I switched to, to this one from this one right here. And this one right here is a really nice bag. Uh, the, this is a six, this is a, uh, polyester, so 600 denier polyester. The difference between polyester and uh, nylon is polyester is more water resistant, I suppose. I don't want to say waterproof. Uh, what's up, Brandon? What's up, Dorian? White Rabbit, Mystery in the River. Uh, Jew <laughs> the Jewish redneck prepper, what's going on? Uh, but this, the polyester is a little bit more waterproof than the nylon. But the nylon is heavier duty a little bit. So, I mean, there really isn't, it's kind of a trade-off. I mean, there's not one that that is that stands out above the other one as far as whether it's polyester or nylon. Uh, nylon tends to be a little bit more rigid. Uh, nylon will, your bag with nylon will look newer for longer because it doesn't uh, stain or, or anything like that. But the, or, or the polyester will, the nylon though, um, you're going to notice some of that stuff a little bit more. So uh, I'm curious in the chat, anybody have any preference on that or does it <laughs> does it really matter? Uh, my thing, the reason I wanted to switch bags was, like I said, this is a decent bag and I've got the website. I'll show you right here what it is. Uh, it is the Yukon Outfitters Alpha Backpack and I don't think they sell these anymore. Uh, but it is a, 
it is a decent bag for that eighty dollar price. Uh, this five eleven bag was uh, double that, a little bit more than double that. Uh, but I think the construction of the well, I know the construction of this five eleven bag is a lot better. You've got the double stitching, you've got the uh, the the zippers, which are the the YKK zippers, and I'm pretty sure that these aren't. Uh, I could be wrong, but I, I think it, they, I doubt they're YKK. But uh, the stitching is one thing. So as far as the bag falling apart, I didn't want to do, didn't want that to happen. Uh, this I've had this bag for about four or five years, and I've used it a little bit, not extensively, and it's done okay. So, uh, but the other thing, like I said, this back padding, uh, this padding right here isn't terrible, uh, but the the let me get this out of the way. This amp backpack actually has, uh, it's a little bit more padded right here. And it's got uh, this breathable type material right here, which which is, uh, I mean, we'll see once I start using it, but it should help as far as uh, comfort and in, in all of that. So uh, let me pull this back up here. Uh, this bag, I'm probably, I, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I, I'll offer it to Lisa for her to use. She does her, have her own system and all that, so I don't know if she'll want it. Uh, maybe this gets uh, turned into a Christmas present with some goodies inside of it. Uh, but it does have, and I believe, I believe this is, it, it doesn't say on the website, but I'm guessing this is about 50 liters, whereas uh, the amp backpack is 40 liters. And that reminds me, I did get a comment, and I want to get your guys' thoughts on this as well. I did get a comment on a video I did right before this, kind of a promote or a, a teaser video for this. But uh, AOK412 said, which is the best size for bug out bags? 30 liters, 40 liters, or bigger? Uh, I like non military or no camouflage, so it doesn't look like an obvious threat. Uh, and, and I agree with that. Lastly, uh, for me, a padded waist belt really helps shift the weight from my uh, weight to my legs rather than upper body. I agree with both of that. Um, this is I, uh, this is probably 45, 50 liters, this uh, Yukon Outfitters bag. Let me get rid of this picture real quick. Uh, this Yukon Outfitters bag. Uh, this amp is a 40 liter bag. Uh, and I purposefully chose uh, this size because I wanted something that was big but I didn't want something that was that was too big, if that makes sense. I did. I don't want to be able to, you know, pile a lot of stuff in there. I know people that will will pile a lot more than this. So as far as the bag size, I think that is completely up to you, uh, what you choose. But a, a good rule of thumb, I suppose, if you're talking about three days, if you're talking about a true bug out bag. Uh, you, you're probably going to want at least 30 liters. And again, I'd like to get uh, everyone's thoughts in the chat. Um, smaller than that, like uh, this little EDC bag, this Maxpedition, really cool bag. This is our all-purpose utility bag. This is 11.5 liters. Uh, not very big at all. I've had this thing forever, and it's uh, it's really durable and really high quality as well, and nothing on this is broken we use this thing all the time uh lisa uses it quite a bit for uh you know camera stuff and so i, I can't really i can't really prepper it out but lisa uses it quite a bit so it really depends on on you as far as what size uh you want how much you how much you want to carry how, how far you want to carry it all of that i would suggest though uh start out with 20 or 30 and and work your way into it and see how well you're going to do with that uh, but anyway, this bag, I mean, it's got a lot of cool features on it. It's got the pocket up here. You can organize a lot of stuff in there. You can put some stuff. It's got a pocket right there. It's got another one right here, so it's good for organization. Uh, it's got up on top, it's got this quick access pocket, uh, which is, uh, you know, big enough for, you know, some of the stuff that, that you may need to get to real fast. I don't know that that's, I mean, maybe you could put some trauma stuff in there. I don't know how much you'd be able to get in there, but a tourniquet, uh, stuff like that would be something you might think about putting up in there. Uh, and then on the back here, it's sort of got the same design as this amp backpack. This is where you would put the, uh, the, the hydration bladder in here. Uh, it's got the pocket back here. Uh, 
and it goes down fairly deep. Uh, it does also have side pockets. Um, this is usually where I put my ham radio antenna and things like that. Uh, you can put a water bottle in here, a Nalgene bottle, whatever you want. Uh, the handle on top, and this is kind of what I was talking about. While this is decent, this handle on top, this is what I was talking about as far as quality goes. Uh, this handle on top, you look at that one compared to this amp, and these, it's double stitched in here, and these are, you know, it just seems a whole lot sturdier. And this amp, I've got everything opened up here, so it's kind of crazy, but uh, it's got a handle on top, and it's got a handle on the side. Uh, so I talked about this in a video with Brian. It could actually be used as a range bag, uh, and we were talking where, you know, something like that, uh, it should be a dedicated range bag, and this should be a dedicated bug out bag. But it, you could use it for something like that. You could use this for carry on luggage. Uh, but a whole lot, the whole lot, the sub, the, uh, <laughs> the quality is a whole lot better on this one than the other one. Uh, one other thing, <laughs> White Rabbit said, Dale and Lisa are fancy people. Uh, one other thing, and I don't know what you were, you, what other comments that I'm missing with the whole, the context of all that. But uh, one other thing, though, I wanted to mention was uh, a couple of lower cost, just because, uh, you know, this this amp is about two hundred dollars. Just because something is low cost or lower, like that under the hundred dollar range, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a bad bag. Uh, you, this is definitely going to be better. This, uh, you know, this five eleven. Or um, in the chat, if anybody's got any really good companies that they know of that make really good bags. I know there's a few. There's a few that make top-of-the-line stuff, and then there's probably 100 that make eh stuff, and then probably 500 uh, that, you know, they sell their stuff at Walmart. And that's that's where I would say, you know, don't do the whole, don't go the whole Walmart, Walmart route. Um, you know, I've never bought one, for, purchased a bag from Walmart, so, you know, I could be wrong with that. Uh, it's just, you know, when it comes to something that I'm going to depend on for, uh, that, that I'm going to have to actually absolutely depend on, I don't know that I want it to be a Walmart thing. But if you are just starting out, uh, and you are trying to, uh, just get everything put together, I think the stuff that's in it, in the, at least in the very beginning, uh, is a much it's much more important than the actual bag itself because in reality the bag you're not going to be doing a whole lot with it unless it's practicing unless you're going out uh, rucking around and just just testing it out testing out your physical abilities and all that uh, the odds that you're going to actually have to use it are pretty slim so worry about the stuff that's in it first it, this is my opinion anyway uh, worry about the stuff it's it, that's in it first and then uh, you know go from there and try to upgrade the bag kind of like I did. Um, Mystery in the River said, uh, Kifru, I, I can't even say those, Sitka, uh, Ebers, Ebers, Eberstock, <laughs> Ebersel. I, I don't know what the hell that word is. Uh, London Bridge Trading Company, though, that is another one that I thought about. Um, uh, that is one of those, you know, when you're talking about 511, that quality Max Edition, London Bridge Trading Company, Sitka, I've never heard of, and all those other. Uh, <laughs> the other words that I can't pronounce right now, uh, I'm going to have to actually write those down and look those up. Um, but when you're talking about more affordable but durable quality bags, I think one that uh, that I that comes to mind for me uh, and this website's not loading. Go figure. Uh, let me see here. Is 3V gear, and they're not the greatest. And, and I'm not trying to please. I'm not trying to make it seem like um, these guys make the greatest bags ever. But they are affordable, and they're good bags. I think these bags are just. At, they're probably the same quality as the Yukon Outfitters bag. Uh, and the price, I mean, I mean, it's basically the same, around the same price. You've got 85 here for this Paratus. Uh, this Outlaw 2 uh, is $52, and that's a sling pack. Uh, this Volex 2 is $75, and I believe this is a 40-liter bag. Let me see here. I don't know, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't, oh, 40-liter size right here. So, yeah, this is a 40-liter bag. Uh, not a bad bag. Uh, I don't like, let me go back to the beginning here. I don't necessarily like, I mean, I know this kind of looks tactical and all that. 
I don't necessarily like this kind of bag, even though it's got the pouches on it and all that. Because with this, like that comment said, uh, I think you're <laughs> you're kind of a target. Uh, if you if you were walking downtown with this type thing, you'd either look like you're like you're homeless, <laughs> and somebody gave you a really nice backpack, or you're about to cause some problems. I thought there was a video on this, but um, but there's not. Um, these pouches just kind of flop on there too. Not that you know, I, I would go. Uh, I would go for this, if I was going to get one of these, I would go for this uh, Velox right here, a uh, little bit better. Um, I have, I used to have one of these bags a while back, and I don't know that if I gave it away to my one of my kids or what I did with it, but I don't have that in, anymore. Uh, but this is a, a $52 pack, and I want to see what the, it uh, doesn't say what, how many liters this one is if i had to guess though i would probably say 20 uh somewhere in that range maybe 25 uh, but the whole point with this is you can get some pretty decent bags uh for this price uh for in that under uh, under a hundred dollar range you don't want to get if you're going to get a bug out bag if it's going to be an everyday carry something like this would work if it's going to be a bug out bag or a get home bag I would maybe make something, get something a little bit bigger than than twenty liters. But uh, um, next, what I want to do is uh, want to talk about this Maxpedition Everyday Carry bag that I have. I'm going to get this stuff out of the way, and then I also have this that I wanted to just. It's not really a bag, but I wanted to talk about it dry bags because i know i think Miss ring the river i know white rabbit um actually use something like this i mean not this small uh, this is only 25 liters but actually use something like this as a uh you know as a a, a bag and you can you know with this strap right here you can you could actually do that but i'll go through this here in a minute uh right now I want to talk about this little gear slinger here from Maxpedition. And this is, uh, let me pull this website up real quick. Uh, this bag is, it, it, Maxpedition is a little bit expensive, but they really do make um, good bags. Uh, Broken Nomad Kevin in the chat said dry bags are king. Uh, yeah, and that's what I want to talk about, why they would be, you know, why you would want something like that. Uh, white rabbit in the chat says I use 25 liter, 10 liter, five liter, etc., uh, to separate my stuff. I love the dry bags instead of the Ziplocs. Yep. Uh, <laughs> misreading the river. I, I can't say those words on this channel, misreading the river. <laughs> uh, but at any rate, this Maxpedition gear slinger, it's the Malaga gear slinger, and they're a little bit expensive, but like I said, I got this a while ago, and it is still in really good condition. Uh, and we use this all the time. Like I said, Lisa uses it for, her, like when we go hiking, she'll throw her camera stuff in there. Uh, when we, uh, or we, she goes to photograph, you know, the kids' weddings or somebody's wedding, uh, she'll throw the camera stuff in here. It's got some cool pockets. Uh, the one thing, the uh, the tie on this, this little zipper right here uh, came off, but that's not any big deal. I put some paracord on it uh, and do that. But... In here, you've got pockets to hold a few different things. You've got this inner pocket right here. So uh, putting, it, like what she used it for was SD cards and stuff like that. What I might end up doing with this, uh, since we've got other options now, is I might have this in my car with some extra stuff in it as a quick, uh, you know, on-the-go type of, of bag. Or when we're hiking, I, I will use this and I will have stuff in here uh, that... Uh, you know, some first aid stuff, some, some just your, your typical hiking stuff, and then have enough room in here where I can maybe put some extra clothes uh, or whatever I would need to just on a short, you know, sometimes we go up to Georgetown and, and it's a, basically a day hike. We hike for a couple hours, a few hours, and then we're, we're good to go. Uh, in here, it's got a couple pockets. So, there's a lot you could do with this. This is 11.5 liters, so it's not it's not a real big deal as far as hiking. Uh, it fits, it, like I said, it's the sling, and it's also got the strap where you can tighten it around your waist. That's one other thing that other bag has as well that makes it um, really, really nice is it's got the waist strap and it's got the chest strap as well, so that, that 
you know, the weight goes down to your feet. It stays snug to you. That way it's not bouncing around and, you know, putting all that weight on you. Um, so at any rate, this is kind of a cool, cool bag too. But if you're, if you're going, um, you know, Maxpedition is a little bit more expensive than the rest of them. But if you're going, if you go on Amazon and you find a cool looking bug out bag, uh, that is like 50 bucks, the odds are it's going to be about this size. Uh, and you're going to be disappointed when you get it home and you find out that your the, the bug out bag that you just got is now your everyday carry. But this would work great for an everyday carry bag. This would be this would work also good for a range bag for pistols and ammunition and stuff. Uh, and that you know might be what I end up using this for as well. Uh, my rifle, you know, uh, <laughs> not going to fit, not not by any means, but it would work good for that. So uh, a lot of different. It's also got the compression straps. A lot of different things you can do with this smaller bag. It doesn't necessarily need to be that bug out bag. Uh, also, I've got this little. You know, since we're going over different types of bags, and uh, I've got this little kit right here, and I've shown this a couple times. Uh, I've shown this kit actually a couple times. Uh, that uh, I've got a whole bunch of just trinkets and gadgets and a whole bunch of stuff in. These little kits are kind of cool, and I believe on Amazon. Let me see here. This Max Edition. It's only twenty bucks. Uh, let me uh, click on some of the other images so you can see the. Well, didn't really show you anything. But anyway, for 20 bucks, a uh, cool little bag uh, for what it is. Uh, I had talked about uh, in a, a video a while ago that maybe I was going to put this in my bug out bag. Uh, I've changed my mind, and I'm probably just going to... It's always stayed in the console of my truck because it's got a lot of cool stuff in it and stuff that is already in my bug out bag. So something like this, if it was in the console of my truck... Uh, if I was wearing cargo pants or something, just throw it in, in your pocket, uh, like they call it the pocket organizer. Uh, throw it in your pocket. You can also hook it on the outside of a bag or, you know, do whatever. But these are kind of cool. These smaller pouches uh, are kind of cool. Uh, and then lastly, the dry bags. And I, I wanted to go over these just a little bit because I think there there's a lot of different uses for these. And... I, I saw White Rabbit at the bug out location. We were doing a video over there, and she was talking. She had a picture of hers where she had her. I don't know White Rabbit if your your whole setup was the bag or if this was just covering it. I believe it was the whole the whole bag was like that. And then from what you just read, I'm taking that you take the smaller bags and put your stuff inside that. That's a fantastic idea. Out here in Col, I, and I guess it really depends on your environment too. Out here in Colorado, you never know <laughs> from one day to the next whether it's going to snow, whether it's going to rain, what it's going to do. Uh, so it is always a, a good idea to have something to protect all of that stuff. Uh, so I always try to have one of these. I'm not sure uh, if this is going to make it into my bug out bag or not. I, it, I I want it to. I've got a couple of these in my truck i've got a 30 liter i've got this 25 liter and then i've got a couple smaller ones too 10 liters but even if you're not in some sort of bug out situation maybe you had to go collect rainwater uh, one of these would be really good uh, to be able to grab that rainwater put it on your back and lunk it back to your house uh, rather than you know five gal or a, you know a five gallon jug or water jugs or something like that so uh, that would be really nice as well I imagine, and I'm not sure, but I imagine these are pretty uh, smell-proof, I guess is the word. So as far as, um, I don't know if they would work as bear bags. Uh, uh, Kevin in the chat or, or Mystery in the River, you'd have to let me know. But you could use, I, I think you could use something like this as a, uh, a bear bag hanging up in a tree. And it's not going to, you know, give off all those, those tasty aromas to the bears around. But they're just cool to cool to have, and I don't know what the price of these are. But uh, uh, this one was shoot, I got this a while back and haven't even used this one. I've got the other other couple that I have in my truck, but um, I don't even. Uh, <laughs> Kevin said not bear proof at all. All right, I just I I don't know. I mean, I I suppose the smell would come out of this. So yeah, that that kind of makes sense. So yeah, don't listen to me. Don't use it as a bear bag. Uh, <laughs> teddy bear proof is what misery in the river said so um at any rate i mean that's kind of it on those uh the the bags and stuff if anybody does have any comments uh i can we can kind of go through those right now um 
but otherwise I'm kind of out of <laughs> out of stuff to talk about. Uh, I do like uh, I could pull up uh, uh, what was uh, that? Uh, oh, good lord! I already forgot what what the hell that one was. I was going to look up a couple of those that misreading the river uh, had talked about. I can't find out where that uh, that comment was. I'm going to look here for a little bit, and then if I can't find it, I'm just going to forget about it. Uh, all right. I don't know where it is. It's probably right in front of my face, but I'm not, uh, I'm not going to uh, go over it. Um, so, I mean, it, it really, when it comes to bug out bags, and I don't, like I said, I've said a couple times, I, I, I hesitate calling it a bug out bag because it's going to be, uh, you know, used for a bunch of different things. Uh, Miss Reading the River said, look up Eberstock, Elberstock, however the hell you say that. Uh, I'm going to look that up right now. Uh, And you said dry bag? Yeah, dry bag. All right. Actually, I'll put it on my browser so you guys can see what the heck I'm doing. Uh, is This is probably the one you're talking about. You said type J. This is a type J. Uh, that is, how many liters is that? Uh, done s- that is a huge, that is a huge damn bag. And is that? Is that what you use, Mystery of the River? It's a modular system, he said in the chat. That's pretty cool. And as far as price, uh, it, really cool. <laughs> uh, for 70 bucks, uh, not bad at all. The, the only issue I would have with something like this, though, is the... Uh, the comfort aspect of it. And I don't know, maybe you're just used to this type of setup. Um, But as far as like shoulder straps and maybe I'm just being a wimp, uh, but the shoulder straps and all of that and, you know, getting it tight to you so it doesn't flop around all the, all the, all over the place, I think uh, would be an issue with me, but I don't know. Like I said, uh, it zips into their frame. Miss Ring the river said, okay. Yeah, that's, I'm going to have to actually, the F1 mainframe is what it zips into. Okay. I'm going to actually have to look this up and uh, not sound like a dingbat on the show. <laughs> but that looks pretty cool. Uh, and I'll see what uh, what kind of setup you actually have and what you do and see see how that works out. But that's very cool. Uh, Brandon said in the chat, compression sacks are good too. Spare clothes and other squishy stuff. Let's see. I just want to see. Oh, same type of thing. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, like I said, kind of done here tonight with all of this stuff. A couple of comments in the chat, uh, chatting with each other. So, um, kind of done here with all this stuff. But my whole point is I wanted to kind of get this stuff out, and I figured it'd be kind of fun to do a video of while these are empty, uh, and kind of go over the pros and cons of all of them. Uh, like I said, it doesn't have to be a super expensive pack. Uh, I do really like this. This 511 uh, Amp 72 has been on my wish list for a long time, so it's uh, something I'm glad to finally have and something that probably will ask, outlast my ability to use it to its full capacity, I suppose, uh, because when you think about being uh, 70 years old, I don't know how much rucking I'm going to be doing for, you know, 5, 10 miles, stuff like that. Of course, if it's an SHTF situation, I'm going to do what it takes. So, uh, But uh, I think this bag will, you know, I, I guess call it my forever bag, you know, kind of like a forever home. Uh, I think this one will last quite a while and, and serve its purpose for a very long time. Uh, the other bags, like I said, you don't have to get the super expensive ones. The other bags will work too. Uh, just know that um, you're not, you know, the, the quality is eventually, you know, it could end up biting you in the butt at some point down the line, and that's something you don't want. So, uh, And I know there's a lot of other bags other than 511. There's, uh, you know, other ones from 3V Gear 
those are just a few that I know that I've actually had my hands on that I know what they are. Uh, the Yukon Outfitters is a decent bag as well. Not something that that's that's kind of why I decided to switch because it's not something that I'd really want to put my my you know it, it when everything when all the cards were on the table the S's hit the fan and I'm rocking for three days or doing whatever it is. Not something that you know I don't want to strap breaking or a zipper pull breaking or something like that uh when when everything's happening so uh kevin said i'm bringing bringing all my stuff with me at all the times don't really need a day pack for so all i really need is a day pack for short hikes yeah yeah and i've got so much stuff in my truck too that's that's kind of where that dilemma comes in um with preppers and i've got all these different types of bags and all that stuff but i've got a lot of stuff in my truck that i have uh and i don't have the video here maybe Maybe on one of the live streams, I'll do a video of the stuff in my truck. But I've got little plastic totes that are, I don't know how big they are, but they fit under the under my seat, my F-150. And I've got three of those, and they fit perfectly uh, under there. And I've got uh, mountain house food. I've got uh, camping stuff, basically. Any of the, the spare camping stuff that isn't, you know, necessarily the stuff that we use all the time. I've got an older tent, a two-person tent that stays in there just because I didn't want to throw it away. I've got a new one, uh, and it's something good to have in there. All of that stuff that I could take, say I had this smaller bag of this Max Bishon bag in my truck, I could load that sucker with all of that stuff and and be ready to go at a moment's notice. Uh, I would also have that larger bag in there. Uh, hey, just like Brandon said in the chat, hey, just like everything else, if you're a thrifty shopper, uh, so subscribe to everyone's emails and get notified of sales. Those, uh, yeah, that's, that's no kidding. If you're, you know, a lot of people have the, those, those emails set up specifically for that spam and that junk crap. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, that, that is a damn good idea though. Cause it happens all the time because everybody jacks up their prices super high all year long and then, you know, have 14 different sales, uh, uh, you know, throughout the year. I love sun oven, but they do that all the time. I get emails from Sun Oven almost every month. They're having some sort of flash sale or something like that. So, uh, yeah, you can you can definitely find those deals. Uh, White Rabbit said, uh, when I watched your video of what you have in your truck, I realized that I'm woefully underprepared with my bag. Uh, that started my new inch bag journey. Yeah, White Rabbit, you've got a you've got a better setup than I think most people do. Uh, at, at this point, and I know you're, you're kind of only halfway through, uh, getting everything figured out. And, and that's another thing with these bags, with bug out bags, go bags, get home bags, whatever. All of this stuff is constantly changing too. Uh, so the things that when I do this next video and I actually put this bag together, uh, the things that I have in here now may not, may not be the same things that are in there a year from now. I talked about a hammock. Uh, and I'm I'm curious, White Rabbit. You were talking about going and using a hammock. What did you think of that? Um, I've got a hammock that I that I've just used hammocks my entire life, so I put one in there. I may change that, and I've got a little emergency bivy. I've done some research on some some military style bivies uh, that are more heavy duty. I may go uh, that route in the future, and I think those are 100, 150 bucks, all the way up to like 300 bucks. Uh, I don't know that I will go that far, uh, but something like that may change as well. Uh, I got a, a comment on one of my, I think it was that video where I went over the supplies, uh, and somebody somebody put a comment in the chat, uh, 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 pack light, freeze at night. And I think that's uh, a lot of people in the military say that as well. Uh, and they do pack light because they're used to that. You know, I've talked to Brian about this and he's like, you know, pack it only, only what you need because uh, it's, you're going to end up dropping it all and it's just going to weigh you down. But I do want that comfort. I, I think it's important to get a good night's sleep and um, I do want that comfort. But again, <laughs> if it were that dire type situation, that, that could be one of the first things that I'm, you know, tossing littering on the side of the road. Um, that reminds me of a conversation we had with, with Chris Weatherman uh, a while back when he's talking about in a SHTF event, it's going to look like somebody raided a Walmart and then people are just going to be throwing stuff all over the place. Cause especially you know, like preppers, some preppers have just these huge, big, huge setups and, um, you know, looks cool, but you know, they're, uh, you know, I don't want to be too rude, but you know, 
Uh, it doesn't look like they've you know been out and used it and, and don't don't know what they're in for. Uh, and again, I'm preaching to the choir a little bit with that because it's been a, a few months since we've been out hiking and I haven't even used my uh, uh, my uh, 511 yet. So, uh, but I am going to do that. So, uh, so. Uh, yeah, good good idea, Brandon, with the subscriptions and all of that. I mean, if you can get, you can get really good deals on a lot of stuff. You just kind of have to be patient with it. I I struggle with that sometimes because when I get my mind set on something, it's like uh, you know I, I I just want it. <laughs> so if you can be patient and you can watch out for that stuff. Uh, you can even put like extensions on your browsers that will look for uh, the best deals and and go for those. Uh, I may. Oh yeah, Brandon, good 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 comment. Uh, don't don't overlook gear at Goodwill, uh, especially in the posh outdoorsy areas, out outdoorsy areas like Boulder here in Colorado or mountain areas in California. Yeah, and that's one of those. It's kind of a crapshoot. Uh, sometimes I'll just go just to kind of browse. Most of the time, they don't have crap that I'm looking for. Sometimes they will have some really cool stuff that most people wouldn't even give a second thought to. But us as preppers, uh, we see it and we see gold mine. You know, there's a lot of different things that those off grid tools and uh, things that we could use, things that, that we read about and talk about all the time that you can find at Goodwill. Uh, sometimes some good reading material too. I mean, entertainment is is also we don't think about it as a survival thing but that's also going to be important in an shtf situation because uh, a lot of the scenarios you and your children if you have children be bored out of your mind so reading really helps pass the time and all that but yes uh, thrift stores uh, fantastic idea for uh, getting stuff i haven't even though i've got like 13 bags if if we go to a thrift store and i see a bag that it, that I know is a good quality bag, and it's like ten bucks, fifteen bucks for a say a five eleven or uh, some of those names that Misreading the River said. Uh, the, the trading company, I can't remember what that one was. Misreading the River, let me know. Uh, uh, I wanted to look that one up. The not something trading company. Let me know what that is. Uh, but you can get a lot of cool stuff at at Goodwills and stuff like that. Garage sales is also another one where you can find some stuff that people just don't know what they have. Uh, and then you can thank you, London Bridge Trading Company. Let me look that up real quick. Let me put my browser up and then look that up. I just I'm just curious uh, the price on some of this stuff. It's hard to type with my computer right in front of my face. Here, just go. Ah, I don't know if this is the right one or not. I think it is. Uh, so we'll go packs and bags, assault packs, huh? <laughs> assault packs. All right. So a thirty liter bag right here, two hundred and fifty bucks. See, I, I don't know uh, that I would. Two hundred bucks was about my max on a bag. Uh, this is pretty cool, though. I do like this low-profile type design. 30 liters, uh, not terribly small, uh, but a cool-looking bag. A little expensive. You go to the more tactical. Uh, this this one is sold out, but it looks, whoa, 673 bucks. Not in my house. <laughs> uh, thousand denier Cordero. Uh, yeah, this is some. This, these are some good stuff, though. Um, I'm trying to see if it says here what the liters of this are, and I'm either missing it or it's not saying. But um, anyway, that's too expensive for me anyway, so I'm not uh, going to look at that. Pistol magazine pouches. I want to see what some of these are. 40 bucks. That's not terrible. Uh, accessory bags. So like those little ones I was talking about, 150 bucks. Or not, not quite those little ones. Hey, fanny pack. Uh, you can get a, a fanny pack, Missing the River. <laughs> uh, yeah, camel fanny pack. That just doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> You'd be the tactical dude with a fanny pack on. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, though, you know, make fun of fanny packs, but they they do kind of ha they do kind of serve their purpose i could see and i've seen a couple videos preppers doing videos on the fanny pack thing i don't know 
Uh, me personally, there's too many other things you can do than have the fanny pack on. Plus, I, I think we all lived through the time when fanny packs were a fad and we saw people wearing them. You know, I, I have this vision of some dude in the short shorts on the rollerblades uh, with his fanny pack on down on the beach or whatever. Uh, uh, just just not my style. There's too many other bags and too many other things. You got cargo pants. You can fit a whole lot of stuff in some cargo pants, and I think I'd go that route before I'd ever go the fanny pack route. Uh, you need a fanny pack to cover your skeeter bites and keep <laughs> and keep your butt warm. That's true. You know, you know. I guess if if you're you got to find one use for a fanny pack other than someplace to put your sunglasses and your your sunscreen and all that. Uh, that would be that would be what it is. Uh, or maybe back in the 80s or 90s, whenever it was, they were super popular. You know, cell phones were the size of a brick back then, so you know, maybe put a cell phone in it. Uh, any rate, at any rate, everyone, I'm going to get out of here tonight. Um, I appreciate you all joining in. Like I said, the next video I'm going to do, I'm actually going to have the stuff that I'm going to put in my bag. And like I said, that that's the stuff that's going to be in there for now. Uh, we learn stuff. We change stuff. We, new stuff comes out. New, better stuff comes out. Uh, and then, you know, some of our stuff changes. So this is going to be, and everyone's different. Everyone's bag is going to be different depending on your environment and your situation uh, and, you know, what your plans are and your family size, your family makeup, all that stuff. So everyone's is going to be different. There are some core things that in a bug out bag that should be in every bug out bag. But once you get beyond that, it, it kind of changes a bit and it's really up to you. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube about bug out bags. Uh, and that's because they're just kind of fun to watch. You get ideas about everybody's stuff and, um, you know, pick and choose a little bit from here, a little bit from there. Uh, that's why we all love these the list articles and stuff, right? You can go on the list and go down the list and say, check, got that, check, got that. Ooh, didn't think about that. You know, gives you some ideas. So uh, that's why I think Bug Out Bag uh, videos are so popular and, and those list uh, articles are so popular too. I watch them. I read them. So... Uh, at any rate, everyone, I appreciate y'all joining in tonight. Uh, and until we'll, I'll be on the survival preppers with Brian uh, coming up tomorrow and then Sunday as well. And then as far as this show goes, I said I was going to start doing them on Thursdays. I've got a, a couple of interviews that I have planned and and going through that stuff. It doesn't seem like Thursdays are going to work out very well. Uh, so it may that may turn into Saturdays uh, at, at some point because that just seems like a a, be, a better day for I do want to get more guests and stuff like that on rather than just me smacking my gums so I think that may turn out to be a better day but like I said uh, I will once I get everything ironed out and let everything let all the pieces fall uh, we'll figure out when exactly that's going to be but uh, uh, at any rate I appreciate y'all joining in tonight and uh, we will talk to y'all later